Hi guys, in today's video, I'm going to be telling you how I study to prepare for the NAVLI. To give you some background about myself, I'm a fourth year veterinary student at St. George's University, doing my clinical rotations through Lincoln Memorial University back in the US now for my final year, and I just took the April window NAVLI. To give some background about myself, um, like I said, I'm an SGU student and I started in a January class, so this April window was my first window of opportunity to take the NAVLI. And if you're unfamiliar with the NAVLI, it's the North American Veterinary License Exam. You have to take it and pass it to be licensed to practice in the U.S., to be in North America. Um, there's typically two windows, November and April. November being the traditional window because most vet schools only have an August class. Um, and the NAVLI is designed to take it about six months once you start clinical year. So most clinics are starting clinical somewhere between May and June. Obviously, there's some outliers in that. I can't cover every single school. Um, and so by November, December-ish, you've been in clinics for about five to six months. I took it in April because it was my first window. Um, there's two windows to take it, like I keep saying over myself. Um, and it just gives you an opportunity. If for some reason you fail that first time, you can take it again the second time and still kind of be licensed before you graduate or right as you're graduating. So that's just some background before I keep going. I'm also gonna preface this by apologizing that I'm outside. For one, I just really enjoy being outside. I love the Florida weather where I am right now. It's a really pretty day. Um, I'm also staying with a um, lady that works night shifts and so I'm just trying to be considerate and everything. And plus, Toulouse likes to be outside. And for all of you who like him, he is out here living his best life. That large bulky thing is his GPS collar. Um, but anyways, we're going to go on and get into this video. So the first thing, my first word of advice is to start studying early. And if you're watching this as a pre-vet student, as a very early vet student, like I'm talking like your first or second year, I don't mean early like as soon as you start vet school. I mean like as soon as you start your clinical year, you need to start studying, especially if you're like an SGU or Raw student that for some reason is not in that traditional window and you might have a shorter window. Um, for example, I don't know if you did the math when I said it earlier, but I started clinical rotations in January and I took the test in April that was like a solid four months that I had to study so it was a much shorter window and regardless whether you have four months six months or even if you don't want to take it your first window you want to wait all the way to the end study when you get access to the two main study aids which I'm going to talk about later clinics are exhausting and every when you have free time trust me you're not gonna want to study so the further out you start studying the less you have to cram and bulk the closer the test gets my second word of advice is make a plan and stick to it. This is where I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the study aids that are out there. Unfortunately, for vet in the world of veterinary medicine, there's not that many aids. The two main study aids that people use are a program called Vet Prep and Zuku Review. SGU personally gave us access to vet prep and our term six, at the end of our term six, as we were going into clinical year, many vet schools do give people access to one of the two. It's usually vet prep. That's like the best one supposedly out there and everything like that but on vet prep i know for sure there is a calendar um it's a three-month plan and a six-month study plan it basically breaks down everything that you should be doing on vet prep there's i think close to three or four thousand study questions you can take timed exams um and with the study questions you can go through them take as much time as you want um and then it'll give you an explanation for most questions on either why the correct answer was the way it was or why the incorrect answers weren't correct and then you can take timed exams where it gives you the same amount of time you will get for your navli just in a small section. I think the maximum you can do is 60 questions because that's as large as a section will ever be on the NAVLI. And then it'll give you your score based on that. You can also break these questions down by species um, and certain subcategories of that. Vet Prep also has these amazing things called study review pages or power pages and power lectures, which is basically these big topics that are commonly seen on NAVLI and it gives you a summary sheet. I highly recommend you go through those because Maybe the way that your professor taught it is not the way that NAVLI wants you to know it because this is the licensing exam. It's not always how everyone practices in real life. And there's just some things that NAVLI wants you to know a certain way. Um, towards the end of my studying, when I just realized there was no way for me to complete all of vet prep in the amount of time I had, I made sure I went through all of the power lectures and all of the power pages. And they were really helpful because for some things that I learned, maybe just my professor didn't really teach it. There's, it's impossible and I tell everyone this, like don't, give your professor slide it is impossible for them to teach you every single thing out there so it was a really really great review 
My next advice is to focus on your individual needs. While I think the vet prep plan is amazing, and if you really stick to it in that amount of time, you might get through it, you also have to focus on what you know are your weak points. If you know that when you were taking your dermatology portion of your basic science years like it just never grasped on and you knew you kept telling yourself I need to go back and review my dermatology stuff now it's time to do that don't put that off because you're just trying to follow like what vet prep says like and don't get me wrong vet prep has some amazing things on dermatology not that dermatology was my weakest point but I knew it was an area I needed to touch up on and I trusted Natalie be or I trusted vet prep because I knew that it was going to point out the most common tested things but I also knew that I needed to take the time to go back and really reteach myself these things and so I say that to say if you know you're struggling with pigs really go back and study on your pig stuff even if your study guide isn't saying pigs on vet prep the piggyback on that is to take good notes in vet school if you're watching this and you're not at the point where you're about to take the Napoli study well and just good, take good notes so that when now you're going back and reviewing these things you're not reteaching yourself concepts you can just look back at your notes that's why I Everyone talks about me taking time for my notes, but trust me, my notes are colorful and well organized. And when I was studying for the Navli, they were the best thing because I felt like I was reading a color book, a coloring book that like had everything just spelled out for me. I didn't have to go back to 200 slides of stuff to re-explain things to me. It was just right there, summarized, and it was great. So take good notes while you're in school. My next thing is to take the ICVA practice exams. The ICVA is the board that actually writes the NAVLI. And while Vet Prep and Zuba Review are great, they are not the people who are writing the exam. ICVA writes the exam, and so they have these practice tests available. You do have to purchase them for, I think at this point, you can buy two of them for $55 and get no feedback. You can buy one of them for $65, and it gives you the right answer for all of them. It doesn't tell you why, but it's still tells you the answer um, and it gives you your rough estimate of how you would do on the NAVLI. I think that's the best thing because these are the people making the test. These are retired actual NAVLI questions and it gives you, in my opinion, the best idea of how you're going to do. I took one at the end of term six that my school paid for. It said that I might pass, I might fail. I took another one in February. I got the exact same score on a different one. I took it two weeks before my NAVLI and I was well above the passing range. So we're going to pray and hope that I pass just like that last practice test said I would. Okay, this video is getting lengthy, guys. I, I hate it. I really go into these things saying I'm going to be short and concise. Like I have a list. This is my second time recording this video for you guys because for one, a lot of times I just talk and I'm just so thorough because I enjoy doing this. I enjoy talking to people and helping people. And sometimes I get tunnel vision and forget things, but also I just talk a lot. And look, now I've wasted another 20 so let's keep going to the next one. My next thing is take the exam seriously. One thing that my clinical um, coordinator told us is that don't look at the NAVLI as a test that you can just take again if you fail. You can, but you don't want to walk in there thinking that. This exam is close to $1,000, US dollars, yes. Um, the baseline fee is like $760 as of right now, 2022, when I signed up to take it, plus your state fees that some states have. You don't want to be taking this test over and over and you can't reschedule it. Like I signed up for the April window. I couldn't decide in March and say, man, I don't think I'm gonna be ready in April. Let me push it back to November. Like once you sign up for that window, you're taking that test. So be sure that you're ready for this. And when you study, like study hard, like study like your life depends on it because you shouldn't be taking this test over and over again. This advice is more so advice as you are actually coming up into the last like few weeks coming into your exam, and that's don't switch up your routine. One of the things that Vet Prep does have is a little guide of things to do right before your NAVLI and as you prepare for your NAVLI, test taking skills, blah, blah, blah. But even a clinician that I shadowed while I was doing one of my rotations, she said, and she said, don't switch up your schedule. She was like, you work out, which I work out six, seven days a week. I know I should give myself a rest day, but working out has become my thing and I'm just doing the thing. But if you work out, keep working out. If you go to sleep at 10 o'clock at night, don't start staying up to 3 a.m. two weeks before the NAVLI. Um, I tell everyone I get my sleep. Uh, I think the latest I might have stayed up studying for the NAVLI might have been right around midnight. Like I still went to sleep. I still woke up at five o'clock to go to the gym. I still meal prepped. Um, obviously I ate out a little bit more probably that week before the NAVLI, but don't switch up your routine because switching up your normal routine is going to physiologically stress you out and you don't want to stress yourself out more for an already stressful exam. 
so that is a main thing of advice and the night before take the night off don't study take yourself out to eat go get a massage these are the exact words that were given to me and while i don't like massages and i didn't get a massage i did take myself out to eat i got acupuncture two days before my exam and yeah my last thing to say and this was what was said to me is remember that it is going to be okay if you don't pass one of the tip or one of the vets that i shout out said that people always said that you know if you if you don't pass you can take it again if you don't pass it's not the end of the world but no one ever said it was going to be okay and just know that this test does not define you like i say this about any test i say this when people are taking a gre when i have high school people talking to me about sats and undergrad like your grades don't define you and you failing this exam does not define your career it doesn't make you dumb it doesn't make you any less of a worthy vet it's just how well can you take a test and how well can you take the test in a way of people trying to make sure you're worthy of passing the test and so just remember if you fail you can take it again it's not the end of the world and with that i got through my video on my schedule oh my god something's flying around my head um so i'm going to end this here um like i said a few when i went off on a tangent i really enjoy helping people i really enjoy talking and helping and like if i find out that i pass i will probably make another video close close to the time of the next navali window in november um with more specific things if you want to know how i take my notes um other study tips like please drop those videos below message me on instagram follow me on instagram like i'm always available i really love helping people and yeah Pray for me that I passed and I will probably let you guys know whether I passed or I didn't pass and I hope I don't have to take that test because I've been taking some time off living my best life just chilling but obviously if I get the results back end of May early June that I didn't pass I will probably start to study again and really crack down as November comes up but until then I'm living my clinical year out um, I finish up in December early January and yeah so until next time